you probably haven't heard but Britain voted to leave the European Union. Now, we're going to avoid that argument like it's the plague and instead ask the question, why did Britain join it in the first place? First of all, when Britain made its application to join the EU in 1961, it didn't exist. Instead, it was the EC, the European Communities, which would eventually go on to become the EU. And the important body within this was the EEC, the European Economic Community, since Britain's primary interest was economic. It consisted of these six members, and some were much less keen than others on Britain joining. More on that in a bit, though. So, Britain had previously focused its economic ties with its remaining imperial territories in the Commonwealth. Yet, as these nations began to shift their focus to other nations like the United States, Britain had to look for other markets. Britain had originally been opposed to any formal pan-European organisation of nations and felt that all that was needed was a free trade agreement. These negotiations for a free trade agreement fell apart pretty quickly and when these six nations formed the EEC, Britain sat it out. Instead, Britain and these nations got together and created the EFTA, the European Free Trade Association, which removed some of the barriers to trade with the EEC. And thus, Britain now had a choice, either remain as part of the EFTA, known as the Seven, or apply to join the EEC, known as the Six. There was pressure to do this because Britain's economy wasn't growing as fast as the rest of Europe's, and there was a fear of being left behind. And thus, in 1961, British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan went for membership. Now, applying to join the EEC didn't guarantee success, and for Britain there were two major obstacles. The first was the United States of America. Britain wanted to be sure that its membership of the EEC didn't contravene any American foreign policy. The second, and the biggest hurdle, was France, specifically President Charles de Gaulle. And in 1963, he vetoed Britain's entry into the EEC for several reasons. The first was that de Gaulle believed that Britain joining the EEC would weaken its ties to the British Commonwealth, which he felt were a vital part of containing communism. The second reason was that French-United States relations were pretty poor in the early 1960s. And thus de Gaulle was concerned that Britain would simply be a means of America directly affecting the way the EEC works. In de Gaulle's eyes, these two things combined meant that Britain would never properly commit to Europe in the way that, say, France or West Germany had. Despite being rejected, Britain didn't give up and instead did everything they could to make future integration easier. A reason for Britain's continued interest was a concern that financially it was too reliant on the United States. In 1967, Britain again made an application to join and again, Charles de Gaulle vetoed it. His reason for this was that he felt the British pound was too unstable and that Britain would need to devalue it before entering the EEC. Prime Minister Harold Wilson didn't want to do that and so he went on the charm offensive. And so he got the most charming man he could find, Chancellor James Callaghan, to write articles in French newspapers claiming that the French would eventually come around to Britain's way of thinking and let Britain in, but fun fact, no. Wilson, for many reasons, devalued the pound, and so with that, de Gaulle's primary reason for not wanting Britain to join was gone and he vetoed them again. This rejection, however, was condemned by the other members of the EEC, and to many in Britain it sort of felt like de Gaulle simply held a grudge. Now, Britain, not to be defeated, had two clever tricks up its sleeve. Number one was time, because de Gaulle wasn't going to be president forever, and sure enough, he wasn't. Number two was collective bargaining. In 1972, Britain made a joint application with Denmark, Ireland and Norway on the condition that if Britain didn't get in, nobody would join. And this time it was accepted by everyone except by Norway, who then stayed in the EFTA. Three years later, Britain held a referendum to confirm whether or not it would continue its membership, and this was overwhelmingly backed by the public. The European communities would become the European Union in 1993. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with thanks to my Patreon supporters whom you can see on screen now. And with an extra special thanks to James Bizanet, Ike, Danny Maloney, Colin Castleman, Marvin Cassow, Rob Waterhouse, Aaron the White, Jordan Longley, Chris Wicker, Gustav Swan, Gareth Turner, Marcus Arzner, Maggie Pakskowski, David Silverman, Spinning Three Plates, Spencer Lightfoot, Lexi Schwinn, Winston Kaywood, Kelly Moneymaker, Anthony Beckett, The Original Cage, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle, Parshu19, and Moe.